as the first humans to ever venture out this far into the front. Too fast! Get out! I thought we were both goners. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the DX Gamer Show, and welcome to the second episode of my Planet Explorers version 0.72 Let's Play. During the previous episode, we've kicked things off as we have apparently crash-landed on Planet Maria, a Earth-like planet that is roughly 80% the mass of Earth, apparently. And we have gotten some tutorial missions that's given us some tools from our injured crewmate, but we're soon going to have to head out and find her a doctor because she's not sure how much longer yeah. she's going to last. Currently, we are fighting yeah. some animals here so we can get yeah. some animal fat so we can finish the tutorial missions. Uh, I think we need to build a torch at this moment, and then later we're going to have to learn how to build a campfire. It would seem that our yeah. animal friend got some backup. Yeah. And that's actually another one of the cool things in Planet Explorers. If there are other yeah. local of the same species and you happen to attack yeah. one of them, they will come after you as a pack and try to take you down. And in the earlier stages, some of the bigger creatures, yeah. that actually can become very problematic. And in fact, some of the yeah. toughest creatures yeah. in the game are hard enough with the top tier armor and top tier weapons to take down as it is. So it can get pretty ugly. And as you may notice, our animal friend is making it very difficult to attack him. They do little zigzag maneuvers and they outright sprint away from you when they are pretty much in the danger of dying. So it kind of, it's tough at first when you're trying to attack them with weak melee weapons that do not a lot of damage. Sometimes you're chasing after animals just to get that little bit of food or animal fat. And I can definitely appreciate the challenge. What is it now? I bet you haven't had anything good to eat in a while. I'm going to fix that. But I need some materials to make a campfire. Think you can get them for me? Oh? Yes, I think I can do that for you, Grady. I think this is actually one of the Don't last side parts of the tutorial mission. You can actually end up skipping this stuff if you do the main stuff where you head off to the next camp. I just want to make sure I'm thorough and get everything here. So, as you can see in the lower right-hand corner, it's the quest log. It basically tells you some of the things you need. You get a lot of these kind of missions. Go get this, certain quantity of this to do the next thing. And then yeah. they will typically give you the crafting yeah. stuff. We could have just um, went out here, killed a bunch of animals, mined some wood, and bought all the stuff off her, off her without actually doing these. But you get them for free, so and it's actually a little faster to progress this way, so I uh, figure why not just uh, follow the story, yeah? Okay. Again, for the purposes of the Let's Play, I'm going to try not to spend a ton of time gathering wood and other stuff. I'm going to try yeah. to be opportunistic and grab yeah. them along the way to the next mission area. But uh, for now, we just need these kind of things, so I'm going to grab them real quick, and then we will continue yeah. on. Also, for the first yeah. parts of this Let's Play, I'm going to keep it focused, and we're going to do a lot of the mission stuff. There will be a little bit of mining here and there. We're not going to stop to build any kind of structures until we're able to actually set up a base or colony. And that actually doesn't happen for quite a while down the storyline. So we will be building stuff, but it won't be for a while. Now, there's two different yeah. types of building in this game. There's building stuff in the editor, which is for weapons and vehicles and uh, flying vehicles and stuff. And then there's just block building like you're familiar with, like Minecraft and that sort of thing. So um, most of the building takes place is going to be actually building like the Minecraft style for homes and that sort of thing. Now, in earlier versions of this game, there was um, building crafting in the uh, editor, but they took that out for now. I don't know if that's something they're planning to do permanently or if that's just a temporary move. I'm not sure. Certainly, there are a lot of variations and shapes to build stuff in this game as far as uh, Minecraft style. So you can do stuff a little more advanced than you could say in Minecraft. So 
I don't know. It's it works both ways. I don't mind doing it either way. Um, usually buildings and stuff are blocky anyway, so it's not like you have to do anything crazy. But with the editor, it gives you yeah. a little more kind of a focused building where you can yeah. make things look a little better and cleaner and stuff. Especially like with colors yeah. and different things like that. So there is something yeah. to be said for building buildings yeah. and that yeah. kind of thing. But yeah. I don't know. It's all good. I, I like doing all of it personally. So it uh, it doesn't really matter to me. So that creature there that we just took down is actually the first aggressive species that we have encountered. The other two, the monkey and that little dinosaur looking creature, um, are passive. So if we walk in their territory, they won't aggress us. The monkeys will aggress if you kill too many of them and they remember who you are. They'll attack you on sight. But for the most part, they are passive. Now... We've got to be careful when we start moving deeper into this world. In the starting area, we don't really run into anything besides those three species. Although there are some bigger creatures that can one-shot us in our current setup. And it won't be long before we start getting access to armor sets. And I just really like the armor sets in this game. I love how they look on your character. I like to stop and look every time I switch my armor sets because they're all pretty neat. In fact, the very next one actually looks pretty cool. It's like this white and brown set. And I think it's just like, um, I don't know if it's leather or just like animal skin or whatever, but uh, it just looks cool and I really like it. There is kind of like some other sets like the steel and the iron sets that look somewhat, I don't know, kind of medieval. But what I really like is the progression. So you start off kind of like caveman-ish like you do in a lot of other games of this kind. And then uh, what I like about the other sets like the high tier sets is they're very futuristic looking and it's fitting for the level of technology that you start unlocking and stuff. I mean the whole idea is you come from this advanced civilization that has access to replication technology. But for some reason, you don't have access to all of it in the beginning, whether it be lost or you just don't have access to it. And NPCs around the world have like the scripts that you can program into your replicator that allows you to create more and more advanced stuff. And I love that, and it just makes uh, a great story for the uh, reason for progression and all that stuff. Everything kind of fits well together, in my opinion. So the replicator in Planet Explorers isn't really like the Star Trek replicator, where essentially you would just assume that you would just need just any material to make energy, and then you could turn it into anything else, essentially. In this game, you actually need the basic materials to what you're crafting. So if it's you know, uh, the herbal juice like we've crafted in the beginning, you need certain kind of plants or whatever, or if it's some kind of like structural thing that requires metal, like the sword or whatever, you actually need those types of materials. So it's kind of cool and it works and uh, I definitely like it. Okay, so we're going to be making our way back very shortly to Grady as if you notice in the lower right hand corner we have satisfied all the requirements of the current mission we are on and that is to make that fire pit. And we don't really need that so much right now in the beginning, so we're not going to be, I don't know, we don't really, I mean, it's good for a light source. So, one of the things I actually haven't talked about yet, too, is nighttime in this game. So, um, this game does have a full day-night cycle, and during the night, there actually are these, like, spider creatures that come out. And they're freaking scary looking, dude. I love it. They, like, the first time I saw it, I'm like, yee, <laughs> you just want to run from those things because they're just... They got like four eyes, and they're all black, and they got spikes, and they're like they're like these big kind of like spider crab looking things, and they are freaky, freaky looking. Because all you really see is their little eyes coming up on you, and their eyes glow in the dark, and oh my gosh. So we're probably not going to see too many of those in the beginning of the game or during this Let's Play series, because I think at night, for the purposes of this Let's Play, I'm going to sleep because this game gets very, very dark at night and you really can't see very much and I don't want to kind of do that. I don't want to have long stretches of time. Very good. Now we can start cooking. Hey, take this campfire script as well. It will come in handy. Hey. Hey, I think I figured out a new recipe with what we have on this planet but I need some more materials to give it a taste run. Think you can help me? Huh? Hmm, smell this. 
This dried meat will help us stay strong and survive. Huh? I'm still not feeling too well. Unless there's a doctor around, I don't know how long I'll last. We've actually started this movie. I saw a boat land a bit north of here. Someone has to be there. Before you go, let me give you these sword and shield scripts. Be careful oh. out there. And I'm just going to check her shop real quick. I'm going to sell back the sword script because I bought it earlier. Remember how I said that? Uh, it was definitely helpful to have that thing sooner than the point where she gives it to us. We will take the shield script and learn it. And then we're going to go ahead and build the shield because that's going to give us a little added defense when we're fighting different creatures. And I think we are just about ready to head on off to the next area. Now this is an area where I got kind of confused because I wanted to stick the shield on my character, like sheet, where it says equipment to the left. But it's actually better to keep it in the action bar so you can equip the shield as you need it. Some things like the pickaxe are two-handed and they will drop the shield out so when you actually equip the sword again, you won't have the shield connected to your character. So that's just kind of uh, an easier way to have it always ready. It's not long before you have to pick and choose between the stuff on the action bar because it does fill up pretty quickly with stuff that you're going to want. Of course, essential things that I like to keep on the action bar are tools in the front, healing stuff in the middle, and then weapons and utility stuff towards the end. Uh, utility stuff we're not really going to run into for quite a while, so that's not going to be really an issue. So for the most part, our action bar won't be filled up. But for now, as like uh, kind of an example of utility, I consider that pitcher kind of a utility thing. Or the thing we'll need to actually plant plants and stuff as a utility thing. Or the jetpack and glider. Stuff we won't see for quite a while. Okay, so we have finished up the basic tutorial stuff in the beginning stages and we're leaving the starting area and heading off to the next area as you can see the little mini map there on the lower right side we have a little yellow arrow that's pointing us to the area of the next quest which we are going to try to find uh, survivors and the other lifeboat particularly a doctor to help our injured crewmate so that's always something you can pay attention to to help you find other areas if you're playing this game and of course we have the quest log to the far right which uh, gives us an idea of what we're supposed to be doing next, if you don't know in the storyline. As I had mentioned in the first episode, we're going to be opportunistic and pick up plants and fight animals and cut down trees and get stuff that we need as we move through to the next quest area so that we can streamline the Let's Play a little bit. I have also played through the entire main story of this game, so this will also help streamline this Let's Play and make things go a little smoother than someone, say, playing a game for the first time and figuring things out. Boy, it's good to see you alive. What in the five hells happened? I heard a loud bang and down we went. Luckily for me, I was seated right next to a lifeboat. <laughs> A shot? What? Oh, damn. Hold on, let me get my things and then we can go. Guard me against the animals on the way, though. I'm only a doctor. Well, I think now we're to a point where most of the stuff in the middle here is voice acted, so I won't have to read a lot of the stuff for the NPCs, but uh, we will hit a point in the story where there is no voice acting in the later parts. Uh, that will be a little bit later down the line. So I'm not sure how much of this stuff I'll actually have to read out. Um, and I may, like I said, do that whole creative thing, do a text-to-speech so I can have different sounding voices and stuff. But uh, to wrap things up for this episode, we're going to take the good Dr. Ellen Carter over to Grady, and then we're going to bring her back to the main camp. And uh, that will pretty much end this episode. So let's go ahead and get that done. Uh, we're pretty much going to focus here. I don't think we're going to like pick anything up. We're just going to head straight there. So for these parts, when I have characters following me around, I like to zoom out the camera to kind of get a look at them following me. Um, 
because there are points in this game where you need the NPCs with you in order to complete the mission and sometimes they get hung up or lost and you want to make sure that you do not lose them so you will see me either look back often or I will try to keep the camera zoomed out so that I can kind of see them in the background is uh, it really can be a very frustrating thing in this game when you actually need an NPC with you and the quest won't start or it won't finish because you've lost the NPC wherever along the way. So it's good to kind of focus on them so that kind of stuff does not happen. Now again, this game is alpha so we will run into some issues. Hopefully my game doesn't crash too many times but there are some CTDs good. in this game. Sure look like crap. Thanks. It's good to see you too. Hold still and I'll give you something to stabilize you. We'll need to move you to another camp, though, since most of my supplies are there. Plus, it looks dangerous here. Do you think you can move? I think so. <clears throat> Give me a hand. You're gonna be on guard duty again. Lead us back to the other camp. Other than saving a beautiful old man and a young lady in distress, how about three med packs? Actually, good doctor, why don't you teach me how to make the med packs? That would be even better. I think he does. In fact, we'll have to check his shop because I think he sells the script for healing stuff. And that's something we will need because uh, the herbal juice is good and all, but uh, I like the, the med packs a lot better. They heal for a lot more and uh, they make things a lot easier. Uh, I think they just require the same kind of stuff that the herbal juice does, except uh, the sunflowers and stuff. And the sunflowers, usually when you collect them, give you a bit more, so those are actually make things a little bit easier. It's actually starting to get a little bit later in the day, so probably during the next episode, at some point, we're probably going to sleep was uh, pretty nice of the developers to give us uh, with the first character or tutorial missions a bed or there was a bed in that chest uh, behind the ship and that allows us to sleep that is actually a really good thing in this game and I really like that they included that kind of thing because uh, nighttime is dangerous and if you stay inside camp and you sleep in there on a bed or whatever you should be okay for the night those spider creatures that I was talking about earlier don't like light at all. In fact, they stay away from it, so as long as you're in a lit area, you should be fine. There also is a bunch of other goodies and stuff we can shop for in this camp, and we will definitely see that during the next episode. And since we've arrived here, that's pretty much going to wrap things up for this one. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Have a great day, and take care.